to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 guitar solos of all time. <laughs> I'm gonna take a solo there if it's cool with you. For this list, we'll be looking at the most iconic and influential guitar solo sections from the world of rock. Which is your favorite solo? Be sure to let us know in the comments. All right, let's rock on. Number 20, Alex Lifeson from Rush's Free Will. On New Year's Day 1980, Rush dropped their seventh studio album entitled Permanent Waves, and with this track about one's right to choose between pain or pleasure in life, guitarist Alex Lifeson exhibited his free will to thoroughly shred with the spectacular solo. When you're playing with someone like this, you need to keep your distance, as Geddy Lee can certainly attest, and Lifeson himself has recognized free will as one of his favorite solos. In fact, when the band originally threw down in the studio, he was only trying to keep up with the rest of the band. And, well, he succeeded. Number 19, Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machines, Killing in the Name. For the lead single off their 1992 debut album, Rage Against the Machine relied on some repetitive phrasing to drive home their political message of institutional racism. Oh, and they also relied on the impressive guitar talents of one Tom Morello, who gave us a drop D riff that channeled the intensity of the lyrics. You gotta love how Morello shows complete control while still giving in to the powerful sound. He came up with the riff while teaching guitar lessons, and his whammy pedal based solo subsequently provided a masterclass to fellow artists. Number 18, Jack White from The White Stripes' Icky Thump. It only made sense for The White Stripes to kick it old school for their seventh and final album. For the lead single, the band played off of the British phrase Ecky Thump, which actually means oh god. And when Jack White hits the solo after singing about a cryptic trip to Mexico, well, he made us believe in a new religion, and it was called Icky Thump. It's hectic, it's relentless, and it's that classic white stripe sound. Number 17, Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple's Highway Star. With Smoke on the Water, the Deep Purple guitarist paved the way for classical music and blues rock, and brought to life one of the best heavy metal riffs in history. But when it comes to solos, it's hard to overlook Highway Star. Machine Head's fastest track also contains an organ solo by John Lord, but it's Blackmore's classically inspired guitar piece that's the killing machine. It's got everything. Number 16, Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits' Sultans of Swing. When Dire Straits hit the music scene in the late 70s, critics often compared their lyrical and vocal styling to Bob Dylan. But with all due respect to Mr. Dylan, he never busted out any guitar solos quite like this. Based on a chilled-out band that frontman Mark Knopfler saw play in South London, Sultans of Swing is smooth to the core, and that's how Knopfler approached his sprawling solo. Showcasing Knopfler's unique fingerstyle chops, this solo solidified Dire Straits as an influential sound in rock. Number 15, Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead's Paranoid Android. By 1997, many rock fans saw Radiohead as a byword for depression. And while that may be the case for some of their tracks, Paranoid Android poked fun at the idea with a reference to a character from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Recorded
recorded at Jane Seymour's ancient English mansion and influenced on a spiritual level by the Beatles' Happiness is a Warm Gun, Queen, and the Pixies, this mini-epic sees Johnny Greenwood torture a poor, unsuspecting Telecaster into giving two solos worth of fuzzy, distorted beauty. Number 14. Eric Clapton from Cream's Crossroads As one of the greatest guitarists of all time, it's no surprise Clapton's got a number of signature solos to his name. While he and Dwayne Allman made history with Layla's signature sound, it's with Cream's Crossroads solo that he really nails it. In fact, this hard rock arrangement of Robert Johnson's original blues tune is so good, we think Slowhand may have signed a deal with the devil too. Number 13. Brian May from Queen's Brighton Rock Guitarists are known to have a special relationship to their instruments, but none is more special than that of Brian May and the Red Special. Built by May and his father, the homemade guitar has been the fifth member of Queen since day one. With a bond that tight, you know Mr. May and company are going to find a way to show that baby off. And what better way than with a three-minute solo crying, moaning, and screaming out from a wall of Vox amps? Number 12. Alan Collins and Gary Rossington from Leonard Skinner's Freebird with their remarkable solos and defiant rock and roll swagger, Leonard Skinner became fixtures of the southern rock scene. It's because of this cut off pronounced Leonard Skinner that the band first became household names across America. Due in no small part to its structure, half ballad, half up tempo guitar solo. Freebird also became their second top 40 hit, keeping crowds pumped for decades. Number 11. Slash from Guns N' Roses' November Rain. A monumental monster ballad needs an equally heroic guitar solo. While this song was originally released in 1992, it dates all the way back to the early 80s, and even predates the band. But when Use Your Illusion hit stores in 1991, the long, slow birth was proved to be worthwhile. GNR fans listened patiently through the first nine tracks before Slash made it rain with his trilogy of soulful solos in the nine-minute November rain. Number 10. Randy Rhodes from Ozzy Osbourne's Mr. Crowley Randy Rhodes exploded into the heavy metal universe after giving Ozzy Osbourne's music a new lease on life. And while Crazy Train off Blizzard of Oz features one of the genre's most iconic riffs, it's actually that album's second single that captures Rhodes' guitar skills best. Mr. Crowley contains not one, not two, but three standout guitar moments. But the masterpiece's climax is the outro solo. Number 9. David Gilmour from Pink Floyd's Dogs At 17 minutes in length, this isn't your typical rock song. But then again, Pink Floyd isn't your typical rock band. Originally titled You've Gotta Be Crazy, the song took on another form within the structural framework of the 1977 album Animals. <music> Serving as a warning about the effects of business on personal lives, David Gilmour channeled the joys and pains of humanity into a mournful, saturated, and harmonically textured guitar solo. Although sonically quite different, Gilmore's playing reached a level of emotion rivaled only by the band's earlier epic, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. <music> Number 8. 
Number 8. Brian May from Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody With Freddie Mercury's theatrical vocals and lively stage presence, and May's virtuoso guitar abilities, Queen scored big overseas thanks to Bohemian Rhapsody. Featuring elements of hard rock, balladry, and opera, its unconventional style initially baffled critics. But today, it's one of the Brits' most popular songs. It's in this melodic, chorusless tune that May played one of the most incredible act solos ever, and the song would not be the same without it. Number 7. Stevie Ray Vaughan's Texas Flood When folk rocker Jackson Brown caught a show at the 1982 Montreux Jazz Festival, he discovered a Texas guitarist by the name of Stevie Ray Vaughan, and soon invited the guitar slinger to record in his personal studio. From those sessions sprang Texas Flood, an old blues song given the Stevie Ray progressive blues treatment. The song, and its hottest Texas guitar solos, remained a Stevie Ray Vaughan concert staple for the duration of this legend's tragically short career. Number 6. Eddie Van Halen from Michael Jackson's Beat It You cannot talk guitar solos without mentioning Eruption. But it's also hard to ignore this solo from a Billboard number one song. By 1983, Michael Jackson had already transcended racial barriers within the music industry. But with his hit Beat It, he grabbed attention from people of all races and ages courtesy of a killer solo from special guest Eddie Van Halen. While the guitarist wasn't allowed to appear in the iconic music video thanks to his label, he still lent his rock and roll gifts for free, thus providing the perfect grit to Michael Jackson's crossover hit. Number 5. Don Felder and Joe Walsh from Eagles Hotel California After one of these nights set these country and folk-influenced rockers on pace to live life in the fast lane, the Eagles produced another number one with Hotel California. That record spawned the smooth and soulful title track that classic rock radio stations will not let us forget. Aside from its surrealist lyrics, Hotel California showcases some of the most memorable electric guitar chemistry ever between Felder and Walsh. Number 4. Slash from Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine While Slash stood out on a wide array of GNR songs, from Night Train to the aforementioned November Rain, just to name a few, it's Sweet Child of Mine that really sets the stage for the band's later work. Though its brilliant intro riff was conceived as a joke, the track's chart-topping success and incredible solo were anything but. Its parent album, Appetite for Destruction, also became the best-selling debut in American history. Number 3. Jimi Hendrix from the Jimi Hendrix Experiences All Along the Watchtower Though Lil Wing or Voodoo Child could have easily made this list, it's the Seattle Rockers' cover of All Along the Watchtower that lands here. The Jimi Hendrix experience gave Bob Dylan's folk rock original a psychedelic rock spin, which included a killer guitar solo that helped Hendrix earn his only top 20 American hit. Even Dylan was inspired. His later performances of the track were influenced by Jimmy's version. Number 2. David Gilmour from Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb Though 
Shine On You Crazy Diamond is sometimes cited, it's with The Wall's third single that Pink Floyd ensured fans were not comfortably numb to their music. They may have been known for introspective lyrics and effects-heavy, extravagant shows, but their sound wouldn't be the same without Gilmore. His evocative, blues-inspired guitar on Comfortably Numb's two solos, especially the final one, helped solidify the band's popularity and success. Don't panic if you haven't seen your favorite yet. We still have a few honorable mentions to get through and our number one, which, by the way, is very iconic. So let's check it out. Carlos Santana from Santana's Black Magic Woman. Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts from the Allman Brothers Band's Blue Sky. Sinister Gates and Zacky Vengeance from Avenged Sevenfold's Bat Country. Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover. Tosin Abasi from Animals as Leaders, KFO. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven yes. fashionable to knock and hate Led Zeppelin's radio staple Stairway to Heaven, but no list of the top guitar solos would be complete without it. With Robert Plant's bluesy vocals and John Bonham's thunderous bass drum, you've got an unmatched sound blending blues, hard rock, and folk. However, it's Page's complex guitar work during the song's climax that's truly left an immeasurable and all-encompassing influence on later artists. By the way, I would be curious to hear not only what your favorite guitar solos are, but also which guitarists inspire you the most. Like for me, when I'm singing karaoke, I'm often singing Bon Jovi and I'm always doing the air guitar parts because I am basic like that. <laughs> Actually, I would love to see your best air guitar. So why don't you tag me at Rebecca Brayton on Twitter or Instagram with your best air guitar efforts. That'd be so fun. Or you can just come talk to me in the comments or on my YouTube channel. See ya and rock on.